Is this thing on? Is this thing on? It's recording. It's reco How do you know it's recording? Because it says recording. It says rec. <laughs> That's short for recording. Okay. Plus the red light is on. Well, red light usually means broken. No. Speaking <laughs> of broken. Yeah, our truck is broken. Do you really want to talk about this now? I never want to talk about it. I don't either. So. Where do we begin? On Friday. We begin on Friday. It's... Today's Monday, by the way. It rained in the desert Friday. Remember that? Oh, yeah. We drove all the way from Valley of Fire. Yeah, we left Fire Valley, and we drove all the way up 15 through... Well, the first part was desert, and it was raining, which was pretty awesome. Because, mm -hmm. I mean, it doesn't rain in the desert. I mean, it has, I mean, to, it it has to at some point. So we got lucky. It's not often. It's cool to see that. And, uh, and then we got up to um, somewhere else, Hurricane or somewhere like that, St. George. George. We stopped for a minute. Everything's going well, and then we're cruising on 15. Got to Provo. Got up to Provo. Ate lunch. In and out. In and out. It was a good day. It was a great day. Any day you get to eat in and out Burger? <laughs> oh, I ordered an extra cheeseburger. That place was slammed, too. It was, but it was delicious. So, it was so good. We stopped for dinner. It was dinner, not lunch. Mm -hmm. Yeah, lunch. <laughs> and then we um, we kept driving. And the way 15 works, it's kind of strange. Well, where we're going in Wyoming, we were going to go loop around Salt Lake. So Skip Salt Lake. We got off on some two-lane highway. Absolutely freaking stunningly gorgeous. The mountains, I thought we were going to hit the mountains. We are just going right at them. Mm -hmm. And they just keep rising up in front of us. I'm like, where is the road going to go? And we're driving, and we're driving, and things are good, and we're like, what, about an hour away from the campground we're going to stay? <clears throat> oh, yes, the one yeah, that originally planned. Yeah, we were going to stay at this campground, and uh, we're about an hour away. We're going to break up the drive, and then Saturday morning we we're going to wake up, and we we're going to drive the rest of the way to Thermopolis. Yeah. <clears throat> it's about 350 miles, and um, we we're excited. We we're going to get there by Saturday night, hang out with our friends, be be uh be back into the swing of things in thermopolis and and so we're driving along we're happy and then trucks all of a sudden great. trucks running great and then all of a sudden just <laughs> completely lose all power power that's my engine stays on it's my impression of it. it's just shaking yeah truck shaking and immediately it, it kind of felt like a blown tire the sound like <laughs> and then and everything's shaking and that reminded me of when the injectors were bad Part of the reason we went back to Florida and we got our injectors replaced. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, the red rocket is now a rocket. Again, we're shaking. Yeah, vroom, but vroom, it's vroom, much vroom. worse. Like, you can't go anywhere. So There's no acceleration whatsoever. So, we pull over on the side of the road. Fortunately, it's a really wide shoulder, like wide enough for our whole truck camper. Yep. And we park there and we turn the truck off. And we freak out. Because that's what you do when you break down. <laughs> right? Mm-hmm. Ah! You freak out. That's actually what we do when we break down. And we're, we don't know where we are either. We're pretty good so, at breaking down at this point. Yep. Which means we're pretty good lot. at freaking out because that's what you do when you break down, especially when you don't know where you are. Ah! You we freak. stayed pretty calm. No, you freak out. But... We freaked out. We're like, where are we? And so Lindsay, being the like calmer person, was like, oh, there's a park back about a quarter of a mile. Mm -hmm. So yeah, let's at least that, try but... to get there. So uh, I, I don't know if I can say this on camera or not because I mean we pretty much reversed. Yeah, I went backwards on the on the highway on the shoulder, on the shoulder because I didn't think we could go forward and drive because it no was just, one stopped whoa, to whoa, help whoa. either. Yeah, no no stop and help. That doesn't speak about you know Utah yeah. or anything. People mm -hmm. of Utah are great people. They have in and out burgers in Utah, so they're I mean obviously they know yeah. what they're doing, but nobody stopped to offer to help. So we got our flashes on. We're backing up. Finally, it's like, all right, we got to cross four lanes of traffic into the state park, and will the truck do it? The last possible minute after waiting for traffic, I finally throw it in drive, and whoop, 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 we make it across, and it was a nice little downhill, so we kind of cruised into yeah, the parking spot. Parked. 
Then we get out and we begin assessing what we need to do. Because, I mean, freak out moment's over. We got to figure it out. Called our friend George. Called our friend George, our mechanic. He, um, he talked us through what he could talk us through. Bought the hood. We checked to see if there was fuel in the fuel bowl. We figured it felt like it was a fuel issue. So that's the first thing we check. I open up the fuel filter and <laughs> diesel just starts gushing out everywhere. So like, well, it's full. Yeah. And it looked clean, so it wasn't clogged. We thought maybe if it was clogged, it would be getting, you know, intermittent signals of, of sending out the I mean, it still fuel. could be somewhere, but we don't know. So we, we tried that. That didn't help. And uh, we checked a couple other things, just looking at the engine. We're not mechanics. I mean, we, we're learning. I know what an IDM is now. Yeah, I mean, we thought it was the high-pressure pump. Uh, we knew it was getting old and it was about to go out. And our mechanic warned us of that. We had a part on hand, Even, so we were hoping all it was was the high pressure pump. We'd get it installed. We'd be on our way. That was what we thought. So our mechanic told us, turn off the truck, let it cool off. George. George. Call and him then, George. Okay. And then um, turn it back on once it's cooled down and see how far you could get. So we did that. Turned it back on. It was running fine. Right, and we made it the five miles into the next city, which was Heber, Heber City. Mountain, mountain City. Heber City. Mount, mount, there's mountains. Yeah, there's mountains everywhere, but it's Heber City. Small town, no diesel mechanics. We looked, uh, but we went to an auto zone to see if they could read, read the code. Check engine code, because that, so, that was the good news, is that it actually threw a light. So we figured if we can get it checked, then... Well, at least know what we're up against. Mm -hmm. God willing, it's a high-pressure oil pump because we're carrying a spare, and then all we have to yeah, do is find somebody to install it. And from our days of breakdowns, we know we can ask around town, and usually somebody can do an install like that. So we go there, and the, the kid that comes out is great. I think his name is Matthew. Yeah, Michael. So. Michael or Matthew. Michael or Matthew. Great kid. He comes out. He's got his scanner, and he, he plugs it in while the truck's running, and then and it stops. Like, what? He goes, oh, don't worry, this is a cheap scanner. I'll go get my nicer one. <laughs> so he goes and gets the nicer one. He comes back out, and the truck would just not show him the code. Nope, no codes. I got to sneeze. <laughs> Bless you. Is that a blooper? Is that only a blooper if a booger comes please, out? <laughs> please don't sneeze on me. <sighs> it's all that vinegar. Um, so? So... He um he can't really help us, but he's like, go down to the Jiffy Lube just down the way. They'll probably open, and they can they got a really nice scanner and uh, and, and so we go. It's eight thirty at night on Friday mm -hmm. night. I wasn't sure they'd be open. Sure enough, they weren't open. Yeah. So we're like, okay, we'll find a place to sleep for the night, and we'll do Jiffy Lube first thing in the morning. Maybe they can scan it. If it's a high pressure oil pump, then we can swap that out somewhere, God willing. Um, if not, at least maybe we'll get an oil change and that'll give just enough yeah, that'll help us. Um, viscosity and the new oil will be enough to maybe have enough pressure to keep the truck running for the 350 miles to Thermopolis. All we're trying to do is get to Thermopolis. That's, we're not far. We're like, if we can break down in Thermopolis, great, because we're home in Thermopolis. Then we don't even have to fix the truck right away. We can fix it in a month. I'll ride my bike everywhere. I don't care. Yeah. We'd be home. We'd be with our friends, with all the friends that we made. Like if we could just break down Thermopolis, but that wasn't the case because the next morning we woke up, we had the code read. Turns out he can't read it with his fancy code reader scanner. And the oil um, we did change the oil. We put in some Lucas oil stabilizer to add some more viscosity, some thicker stuff to it. And we, uh, and we, we started on the road. We're like, all and right, the truck was running this is great. Truck's running great. And we get about five miles outside of town going up a hill and it does it again. I mean, I don't know if that's the noise I made earlier, but it made the same noise what I did, <laughs> did earlier. the exact same issue. So. Same issue. So now we're panicked, not panicked, but I mean, freak out because we're broke down. Edge. We're broke down again. It's not comfortable. Moral of the story is what do you do when you break down? You freak out. Ah! Right? No. Well, that's what we did, so I mean, I, I hope that's what you're supposed to do, because that's what we did. And I, I mean, I want to do the right thing when we're traveling. 
I want. I mean, this is this is all about showing people the fancy stuff about living in a truck camper or an RV, right? But we really should show the realities. Yeah, this is the reality. The reality is we freaked out enough to not pick up the camera because who picks up the camera <laughs> yeah. when you're just trying to figure out freaking out on next. the side of the road? So we'll we'll figure that out at some point. Maybe we'll get famous enough that we'll have somebody like a little a little person will be in the back seat because we don't have much room for anybody else, but. Maybe they could be back there filming the whole thing, like, and we'll have, you know, like, that's yep. how we... We'll, drama! Drama! Turn we'll, the camera on. We'll, we'll capture the freak out moments when we can freak out and somebody can film us. So anyway, we freak out because we realize, well, we're on this two-lane yeah. row, four-lane road, it's divided. Going up. Going uphill. We have Nowhere to keep to on around. going uphill for a couple miles because that was the last sign that said next exit a couple miles. So we're like, all right, let's turn it on. Let's let it cool off. We let it cool off. And then we puttered our way. Along. And what rain when we restarted it. Yeah. So so great. That's good. We weren't broke down literally on the side of the road, stuck there. We putter along, we get off on the exit. We Turn manage around. to flip around. And then come back into And the come city. back into Mountain City or whatever. And then we decided to go to Ford. Yeah. Who who goes to Ford? Well, it was the only place we could think that would have a scanner we that could read the we drive an a engine Ford. code. So that's why we went to Ford. Yes. Because we drive a Ford. Uh, we know it was going to be expensive. In fact, to read the code we saw on the board, it was $56.25 yeah. or whatever. It was like a half but an hour. they were nice. Were... Yeah, the lady uh, at the front desk was super awesome. She so just went out and did it for Ford nothing. and Heber, 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 Heber City? I think it's Heber. Heber. Ford and Heber City. Awesome job just for your um, hospitality. But she... guess what? What? Their scanner couldn't read the code. Are you kidding me? I'm acting like I wasn't there. <laughs> you kind of weren't. You were walking the dog. Yeah, I was walking the dog. I yeah. was I was calling tow trucks because at that point I'm like, Ugh. we got to get towed somewhere. So I'm 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 away trying to call tow trucks. Lindsay's trying to get the scan the, the check engine light red. Again, we thought if it was red, we wouldn't pay for to do the work because everybody knows if you pay a dealer to do the work, it's expensive. It's a lot. It's a lot of money. And um, money we don't have. We're already we're already hurting. Um, so she can't read the code. I'm like, great. So what do we do now? Well, I, I call the first, um, tow truck company that pops up on an iPhone and no, no answer. I call the second one and it goes to a busy signal disconnected line. I call the third one and it goes to a voicemail. I'm like, ah, oh, what the heck? I won't leave a voicemail. I'll just call the fourth one. And as I'm done on the fourth one, a phone, uh, a call comes in. And it's the third person that I called. And a man named Ivan says, hey, what's going on? I said, uh, I think I'm looking for a tow, but is your shop open? He said, yeah, I, my shop's open. I'm over here right now. I'm just, you know, just down the road. But I say, do you know how to work on Fords? He says, yeah, I know how to work on Fords. I said, do you know how to work on 7.3 liter diesel Fords? And he said, yes. Always ask that question because our engine is a beautiful, awesome million mile engine but it is complicated <laughs> and a normal mechanic typically won't know how to diagnose the issue yeah and of course with the problem that's the first thing that's the most important thing is diagnose the problem i mean if you just throw parts at something you're not fixing it. you got to know what's wrong and that's that that old you know story can i tell the story uh i mean we don't want to yeah i'm gonna tell the story We were hoping Ivan could help diagnose that for us. He says, yeah, man, we're open. Come on by. So it's literally 250 feet yeah, from like the Ford dealership. The Ford dealership so. so that was pretty easy to get there. And we start pulling up. And the first thing we notice, Lindsay starts laughing. There's little boys with rakes out, you know, scraping asphalt in the driveway in the parking lot. We're like, oh, that's cute. Because we used to raise boys and we used to like to put them to work. <laughs> Not in a bad way. We were always doing more work than them. But, mm -hmm. you know, give give a boy it's a good shovel. For kids and to work. Yeah, teach them hard work. And so that's what we did. We, we had all kinds of stuff to fix with our boys. But anyway, that's a backstory. So so we pull in and uh, kind of knock around and, and walk into the shop. And um, a gentleman comes and says, No, I think you talked to Ivan. He's out in the front. So I go out and, and meet Ivan. He says, Yeah, we, we'll take a look at it. No problem. Just, you know, give me a minute. So that begins the next part of the story. Yeah, so long story short, we had the new 
H pop put in thinking that was the issue, the high pressure oil pump. We had to And we had to put in a new filter. That was a rewind. I'm trying to make it okay, so short and sweet. So we get a new fuel filter because um, Ivan's mechanic went to open up the the other one just to take a look. First yeah, place to try and diagnose it. Gasket was loose. So he's like, oh, there's your problem. Uh, air is getting in with the fuel, and so it's causing a hiccup, and we'll just replace the filter. And we're like, oh, well, if, you got, if you're going to do that, can you go ahead and install the new H-pop um, high-pressure oil pump? pump high-pressure oil pump. Can you install that because... We're carrying it with us, and we know it's going to go bad. And you know, we don't. Yeah, it might just, be the issue. Might be the issue. Can you go ahead and put it in? He says, "Yeah, no problem." So, a couple hours of of doing that, um, I go out and I start working with the boys. We're uh, we're paving their the asphalt parking lot. Uh, never done that before. And fencing it in. And fencing it in, yeah. So, um, you know, that's that's what we do. Like, I'm not going to sit around and watch watch the mechanic mm -hmm. work. So we ordered pizza. We had a great time. We love Ivan and his family, connected with his wife. Turns out he's from Mexico. Yeah, his family's from Mexico. His, his parents are still in Michoacan. So we're hoping we can connect with them when we get down there. God willing, we ever leave Heber City. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, maybe just found out that's only 850 bucks a month in high season to rent a place here, mm -hmm. uh, a parking spot. So maybe we just stay and yeah. become U U Utahians. You 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 toe you toe you, 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 I have no idea. You tans? <laughs> what are you? If you're from Utah, tell us. Yeah. What, what do you call yourself? I'm a Floridian. Yeah, Floridian. I don't know what. Georgian. How that would relate then? Yeah. Anyway, so I mean, we could be permanent residents of Utah. Trucks yeah. from here, by the way. Yeah, it is. Yeah. So shout out to Mitchell as well, Mitchell, if you're watching, um, for bringing the truck from Utah after years and years and miles and miles, took it to Florida so we could buy it super stoked we love the red rocket um, we're not talking bad about the red Rocket. we're not talking nope. bad about anybody it's a good truck. we're not talking bad about utah so long story short we spend all day saturday ivan spends time his mechanic spends time we fix this we're like ready to go pay him we're walking out the door we get in the truck we fire it up great it sounds awesome let's get on the road we get on the road and we go like not even not half a mile, mile half a mile and the noise that we know that you now know and we're like man that didn't fix it so womp 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 we went back to the shop and the next three hours basically i are just throwing parts at it ivan and his buddy are you know doing all kinds of stuff just trying to get to the issue they replaced yeah, the idm we tried different sensors fuel idm fuel pump we nothing tried the ip helped. ipr all these acronyms that i'm learning icp icp see I, i'm not learning never mind but we replaced all these different things hoping that it would do the job and it didn't seem to do the job so we stayed saturday night we were supposed to hopefully meet one of ivan's friends on Sunday, Ivan's taking the day off, just bought a house, gonna move. Everybody deserves a day off. We felt bad for keeping him this long anyway. Yeah. So um, we're like, yeah, that's fine. We'll see you on Monday if we see you at all. And he said, well, my friend can help you tomorrow, Sunday. So, you know, if you can if you can show up, I'll confirm with you and just show up and, and we'll hopefully get it fixed. So we were like, okay, great. But that we didn't ever hear We never heard back, back. from anyone. So, so. fast forward. Turns out his phone got dumped in water. I don't know whose fault that is. Again, we're not bad talking to anybody. <laughs> that stuff happens. So we can't communicate with him, which which stinks because we're just sitting around like we want we want to move forward. We can't really move forward. So we just say, all right, let's call it a day. We came back to the campground, booked another night, and uh, just kind of hung out. Mm -hmm. Coming up with contingency plan after contingency plan after contingency plan, just trying to figure out what do we do, what do we do, what do we do. If we try to get towed to Thermopolis, yeah. try to get a friend pick us up on a trailer to Thermopolis. So that's where things got crazy. Let's talk about that. Things okay. got crazy when we started talking about our friends driving 350 miles to pick us up our truck, which would be no problem, right? Mm -hmm. It's no problem towing a truck, but we got a camper on our truck. Yeah. And it's, it's not a harder. fifth wheel. It's not like we needed two trucks to tow our camper and one to tow our truck. Like, this thing's a, a, a beast. And so our friends started asking around. Thermopolis is an awesome town. Can't wait to show it to you. And it's full splendor and glory. The people are amazing. So we thought for sure 
our friends there, um, Ro and Audra, would be able to make a connection with somebody that they knew or somebody that they knew who knew somebody. And all of a sudden, we would have a deal worked out where we could, you know, get a reasonable tow. We expected to spend money on it, but man, if we we're going to be broke down anywhere, let's just be broke down in Thermopolis. So um, we wake up this morning. Now it's Monday. We're trying to figure it out. We hear, you know, from Audra, it's going to cost two to three thousand dollars for a tow. <laughs> They have a couple options they're looking into, friends and friends and a U-Haul tow thing. And it turns out our truck and our camper is just too big, which is kind of what we, we were fearful of. Mm -hmm. But, man, we're holding out hope because if there's any hope at all that our friends can rescue us, great. We're, we're super excited about just that tiny bit of hope. And then that kind of fizzles out because the last trailer that could possibly help us was full of steel and it wasn't going to be unloaded until later on in the week yeah. and you know if i was there in thermopolis i'd actually help them unload the steel <laughs> just you know to be able to help out but obviously that, we're not there we're not so there so doesn't can't, matter can't do that so here we are we're still in bieber city heber city, heber city. that's how we, we think that's how you're supposed to say it if you're from heber city and we're saying it wrong please make sure to add in the comments um that we're How saying to pronounce um, it. i don't know that they'd have to be able to do that but yeah they can leave a comment on the video but how do you how do you leave a comment how to say it copy and paste like the dictionary do you know how to read the dictionary out. thing i don't yeah i don't know how to, with the little it gives you yeah it tells you if like the e is sharp or flat or whatever you know how to read that stuff yes okay well then if you take the time <laughs> to do that she <laughs> will read know. the correct pronunciation so we're in Heber City. Um, we came up with a plan, another contingency plan, which was we finally called our insurance company, who we love dearly. We haven't had to use them for the truck, but Lindsay had to use them for her old car years and years ago. We love our insurance company. Sure enough, I mean, we've got roadside. We knew that. And they said, yeah, we can tell you probably the distance that you need to get towed if you need to go to a different shop or a different town. So we're thinking, we're going to go to Provo or that area. So we call around a couple shops and we find one awesome people said, yeah, we can make room for you. That never happens when you're on the yeah. road and something breaks. It's usually like two weeks, two, three weeks, minimum time. People are like, yeah, sorry, we can't get to you. We've got other customers, other clients that are working for and totally get that. Cause when I'm the other client, I want to know why I live in a town and my car's not done yet. So, mm -hmm. you know, I totally understand that, but they're like, yeah, we'll make room for you. So now we're like, do we go or do we not go? So we said, one last shot. Let's go see if, if Ivan's there. And one last shot, if he's at his shop, see if we can catch him. And sure enough, we're pulling up and we see the garage door, the bay doors come down. Starting to go down. We're like, oh, did he see us? And he's like, peace, I'm out of here. Yeah. I don't want to deal with him anymore. Um, but we pull up and start talking with him. He explains about the cell phone issue and we start talking through. He said, man, we got one more shot. We can try to read the code. And a little and bit run more like a detail, test on run, run a test on the engine and see if we can't really get minute in what the issue is. But I can't do it until I'm off of work tonight. So after five. after five. So we're like, okay, do we call our insurance company and tow to Provo or do we wait it out? And we decided we're going to wait it out. So that's why we are here right now. We are waiting it out. It's uh, 2.30, so in a couple hours we're going to go meet up with Ivan run the diagnostic test. Hopefully everything goes the way it's supposed to. Hopefully we get the exact information for what's wrong with the truck. And then, you know, we can begin the process of fixing it starting tomorrow morning. So we know we're here in Heber City for another night. No problem. We're used to it. It's raining. I don't know if you can hear it, but it's just a cold rainy day. Temperature drops in two days. Again. Back into the lower 30s. So we need to be out of here in two days because we woke up the other day with just snow. snow on the truck and on the camper and all around on the ground. And the dog likes it, but she's about the only one of the three hmm. of us that really care for snow. So the temperature's dropping. I don't think it's supposed to snow, but that's kind of my, like, we, we need to be out of here. Um, that's our goal. So um, if, if it turns out that Ivan reading the code tonight, he can't manipulate it enough, or if it's something beyond what he's able to do, then tomorrow we'll call the insurance we'll company. Get towed. We'll tow to Provo. We just called the mechanics there and they said, yeah, we'll take you in tomorrow morning. So if that happens, when that happens, we will uh, we'll go that route. 
And they said we can camp there because, you know, if they can turn around yeah, in a day, great. Nice. But if not, we may be hanging out in a Provo mechanic parking lot for a couple of days. So we will see how that goes. We wanted to share this with you if you made it this far because we want you to know life on the road is not as glorious as it seems in YouTube videos and Instagram. Yes, there are those moments. Yep. We saw amazing, moments. beautiful things. I mean, thinking of the turquoise water in Banff and Jasper and thinking of getting all the way up to the Arctic Circle. Mostly good. It's... And then there's... Mostly good. And then there's these days. Where and so... You're stuck. <laughs> when you're thinking about going on the road or if you're on the road, you already know this. So you're probably not watching and if you're already on the road because you probably already broke down. But it's really, um, you know, something you have to get used to. You have to expect... You're going to break down in a place you don't expect because whoever plans a breakdown, I mean, if we could have planned it, we'd say, let's break down in Thermopolis, 350 miles. Mm -hmm. But you can't plan that. It just happens. And when it happens, you know, we kind of joke about the freak out, but you got to let that pass. You just, okay, I'm frustrated. I'm upset. I'm anxious. I'm whatever. Like, make sure you're safe. So we pulled off on the side of the road. We always make sure we're safe. You're not causing harm to anybody else, let alone yourself. And then you just take a deep breath and say, okay, this can be solved some way. And it's usually a function of one of two things, time and or money. It's going to cost you something. It's going to cost you time. It's going to cost you money. Anyway, the moral of the story is you're going to break down. You're going to break down in a place you never knew existed. It's going to cost you time. It's probably going to cost you money. It's going to cost you some combination of both. You can freak out if you want. But then you got to be calm and you got to just figure out what your options are and you just go through the options and you know thank god we weren't in mexico because all the speaking in english that we tried to I do i mean and yeah yes and no yeah i mean it would be harder but i i know we're gonna have a breakdown in mexico it's gonna happen right you know the future no but i mean you know the future no lot of tickets <laughs> Just pick the I right number. The pick the right numbers one time. Pick the right numbers one time. That's it. I wish it were that easy. It is that easy if you know the future. I don't. <laughs> we don't know the future. We just know we're gonna break down again somewhere. Yeah. And we're gonna try to have joy in the breakdown. It's hard. It's really hard. But we did make new friends. We love Ivan and his wife and his kids and, and their family and we're grateful for the mechanics that have all stepped in and helped us out. Um, we're even enjoying time at the park. The people here have been nice. We've got decent neighbors. I mean, we're trying to find the silver lining in what is otherwise a crazy situation. So God will, and we'll be in Thermopolis soon. It's Easter Sunday coming up. So we're hoping mm -hmm. to get there, celebrate Easter with our friends. But if we're not, then we will celebrate Easter in Heber city. That's just, uh, that's just how it goes. Hashtag van life. Hashtag truck camper life. Hashtag breakdowns happen. Breakdowns happen all the time in the most incredible places and the most far off the map places. Hashtag peace. I'm picking my own eyes out. I'm picking your nose. I'm picking your nose. No. I'm picking your nose. No. Stop. I got two hands. Stop. I got two hands. <laughs> okay. Until next time. And who knows when this time will be. Yeah. Yeah, this might go up six months from now. Yeah. <laughs> Until then. Ah. Uh.